Hello, hello, Deanna here, and thanks so much for being here. So in today's video, I am going to go ahead and show you a bit of my writing tools that I have been using uh, in regards to writing and plotting and things like that. So I haven't really provided a good update on my writing in a while, so I thought that this might be a good opportunity to do that. So I'm going to jump right into it right now and just buckle up. And this is my writing notebooks and some of the tools I use to write. So I have this cute little pencil case here that says do more of what makes you awesome. I have no idea where I got this pencil case, but in here I just have some paper mate markers. Um, it's really great for like color coding and things like that because I'm very much someone who likes to color code some of the things that I do. I've got like sticky notes in here. I've got some little labels in here. I've got the Tombow permanent adhesive in here, which is great for uh, going ahead and gluing some of my pages together. I've got little notes for myself. This is essentially what I carry around for the most part because it's just a little pencil case and it's really easy to carry around. This one on the other hand, as you can see, it's a bit of a bulkier one. Um, I believe this bag uh, was actually one of the bags my husband got for Christmas for like some of his shaving supplies, but he's got so many bags like this because they tend to come in those shaving kind of kits. And so he gave me this one because he knew I just wanted something a little bigger to hold a bit more. So this one is really something that has evolved and just gotten bigger and bigger. I've got things like little post-its in here. I've got labels in here. I've got little color coding labels. As I said, I love color coding. I've got more sticky notes in here. I've got even this little thingy bopper here that I have just more post-its so they don't get ruined or anything, as well as some mechanical pencil lead and some erasers from mechanical pencils. I've got more sticky notes. Like, can you tell I love sticky notes? I was very tempted to buy more today and I had to stop myself. I've got scissors in here for cutting different things, especially if I'm cutting any papers or washi tape or anything. I've got a nice little pair of scissors and I've got so many different pens in here, pencils. Like this is a mechanical pencil that I use to write sometimes. These are some nice different type of felt tip colored pens that I really just picked up from the dollar store just to go ahead and color code and write things, writing whether that's in my actual writing notebook or my own personal journal. They're just what I use to write. I've got some stickers in here for when I'm writing and how many days I write. I've got more post-its. I've just got all kinds of things in here. So I think that's the majority of what I have in here because it's pretty much mainly just a whole bunch of pencils and pens and all kinds of fun stuff. So those are my two, my big pencil case and my smaller pencil case. It's a little more easier <laughs> to carry around. So I'm going to put these to the side because we're going to get into the meat and potatoes here, which is my notebook, writing notes, and my happy planner that has some writing notes in it as well. So we're going to start with this one. And this one is one that I got recently from Indigo, this notebook, which as you can see is separated 
by these different dividers and then in there in there there's even more dividers that divide within the dividers so it's a pretty interesting notebook that i found on indigo and i loved it so much because this notebook has graph paper blank paper dotted like paper and then lined paper as well so it's interesting the way this is broken up and while i was going to originally break it up by book between book like different types of the style of the paper was going to be different books it was a little too much and i thought you know what this is going to be my book where it's essentially divided up by the type of note and the other one is going to be actually divided up by the actual book so this one starts with the first page has just a bit of a breakdown of some of my book ideas and just a list of that that I started with. And then from there on this next section here, these are on these lined pages, are essentially the headers of genre, length, and plot. And it really just gives me what kind of genre is it, what length am I aiming for, or is this book, and then what is a brief summary or maybe even like the back blurb would be what this plot is or like what I think the plot's going to be and this just kind of helps me set off on where is the story going and what is the story about and then as you notice I've got washi tape at the top here because each book that I'm writing I have organized it based on these washi tapes because the different washi tape coordinates with different books and it just helps me keep it organized. So that's the first section. The next section after this has a bit of a title page and that's the cast of characters page that I created. I just took some stickers and some lettering that I kind of made funky with the ombre effect and I made a title page for this section and this as you can see this is cast of characters because this is a section where I list each book has its own little section as you can see from the washi tape which ones are which and then I'm essentially putting at the top of the page I'll go to one that's not filled out so that we can see the top of the page would have the title of the book and then I would just write like maybe the first main character, have it their name, and then just some traits about them, like maybe some of their characteristic traits or some of their personality traits and things like that. So that I just have a little section, not a big detail, just a little bit per each character, depending on how many characters I have. And then sometimes I'm even just listing some of the supporting characters so that I have their names somewhere so that... I can just quickly go to this and see, okay, what kind of character is this as a quick overview? Because if I just write like the character is ambitious or something, that's going to help me to be able to grow that out more and just add to that and create that character. So that's what these pages are for. Then we go to the next section, which I'm not going to show you completely. Uh, I'm going to show you a blank section of it. And this section, again, I would do the title here. This is going to be one book here, one book here, and et cetera, between all these pages. Some of these are filled out, some of them aren't. Uh, and then this is essentially a bit of like my setting summary and a bit of an overview of the setting of the book. And what this mainly would highlight is I'm gonna put in a here, what's the time period that I'm working with? Is it like the 80s or is it like a modern time period? Is it a future time period? Like what is? Sometimes this is very specific and sometimes it's just a little bit of a an umbrella of what it could be or within these brackets. Then we've got the location of the overall location maybe. Like is it in the US? Is it in some unknown world that I created or something? That's gonna go there. Then a brief little description of maybe what that area is like or maybe even some of these main places because this is going to be a listing of what main areas like are they in a coffee shop or are they at a school or things like that that goes there and this might have a little bit of description of those places 
or it just might have a general big overview. And then I have a significant events section of like what are maybe some of the big events that happen that maybe I need to know like where is that as well, what location was that, as well as some additional, additional details. Now this box here was going to be the setting as well, like I labeled it setting and then I realized, well, all of this is a bit of the setting. So this has actually turned into like my elevator pitch box almost <laughs> where I just do like a brief, like one to two sentences of the book here. And that just kind of helps me as well to really summarize the book. So that is this section where I am, um, I created these little boxes and things to plug all that into. And then the next section is my more detailed plotting area in the regards to using the Save the Cat beat sheet, if you've heard of it, by uh, there's the Save the Cat original by Blake Snyder, and then there's Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. So I took that from both of those and made myself this little page here of this little summary of it. The, the different acts, I used stickers and things. And then I even had this, which came from like an old planner and it was blank and just had the kitty. And I thought that was so cute for the Save the Cat. And then I made the title and then I just wrote out what are the different beats in the this story structure tool, essentially. So this, if you know Save the Cat, you know Save the Cat. And um, if you want to learn more about it, Jessica Brody has a YouTube and she's got some great videos as well, as well as even if you just type in Save the Cat, there's so many videos out there that really uh, talk about this more. And then this right here on this side is the 27 beat story structure and this is uh the I believe it's the 27 chapters or beats within nine blocks I believe is how Katie Tastic describes it and I'll link her YouTube channel in the description because she really breaks this down uh she's who I got this from I don't know if she's the one that actually created it or if she just did a really good job at explaining it but that's where I got this from so the, using these two together is how I am plotting some of my novels and so that's what this section is um through all of these posted notes which helped me color coordinate and everything uh, I would put again the title up here and then along this side uh, even check because I haven't done this one yet but this one it's got the opening the setup the theme the catalyst the debate and then the middle and then the finale like here's where I'll put the save the cat beats right here and then this is where I will put the 27 beats for the 27 beat structure and then just having those together really helps me to fill in some of the gaps where I need to or just have like a general overview like sometimes I need to start this to then get some of these more detailed and it's just where I'm going to try to figure out my stories I don't know maybe don't always stick to these but it's nice to at least have a bit of a framework or a, a general outline I usually am a pantser sit down and just let it go but I've been finding that I haven't finished any stories. Um, my characters sometimes are kind of lost going what's going on. And so I'm using this to really help me focus on the actual story and what is maybe some of that middle or what are, is that finale and just really help me stay organized and focused on the actual story. So that's this section. And then we go to the next section, which goes into the blank pages. So this was this was the dotted paper. I don't know if you can see it, but it was the dotted, which really helped to make these boxes and things. Whereas this one's blank pages. And I was like, well, what do I wanna do in the blank pages? And I thought that would be a great place to have some design drawings or doodles. So I've got design, draw, and doodle where I even, Got some stickers here. I did some of my own doodles. Um, 
using the stickers <laughs> trying to draw the stickers it's to draw and in here I've got each story is going to have a page some of them have some been filled out some of them haven't but this this is very much going to be uh where I put in maybe like if I'm thinking there is an image or something in the book that maybe like for example, I'm going to have like a necklace that a character wears. And what does that necklace look like? Well, this is where I can draw it to get a good idea of what the necklace looks like. Or maybe, you know, there's some other images or pictures or things that I want to include that is going to be in here. So keep that in this section. And then the next section of the blank pages is maps scenes and sketches because sometimes a good book just has a good little map to it or even when you're writing the story I find I want to kind of have an idea of what this area looks like or what the house looks like or something like that so that's what's going to go in here because see I can put maps there I can put like a more detailed like street overview I can do like the house layout and then I also have this because I found this and I thought it was kind of cool the biome chart which has this pyramid here where the wetter the climate is it's over, it's gonna give you some of these kind of outlines and then as you increase this way the drier it gets the more the environment changes and then depending on how hot the climate is or how cold it is Again, that's how you're going to get different uh, environmental changes in the area. And that will just kind of help me to make sure that if I'm describing the place as really dry or something, I'm not making it a rainforest. <laughs> like that wouldn't make sense. So it's just like a little guide here that I found and, and put in there. So this again, this I haven't filled out like anyone's yet because I just haven't gotten to that stage yet for that but that is where each book is gonna have the two pages so that could be a big huge map or maybe it'll be one map here and another thing over here like depends on the book some books really need it like especially if it's like a fantasy or something like that whereas some books don't because I write a whole bunch of different genres I write many different varieties uh, so it just depends on the book on what kind of these two pages are going to be used for the book then we go to the next section which the next section here as you can see says brainstorm and this is essentially this graph paper i feel like would be really good place and i've already used it for <laughs> quite a few of the books to really just get some brainstorming down like what maybe are some of the plots and like the characters that are there or any subplots or like ideas that I've got kind of brainstorming around so I made this little cover page here then again I'm gonna have each book is gonna have a page and that's where I'm gonna have some of the brainstorming stuff going on and then we've got the next section which is Another type of plotting section, but this one I find is a way for me to use this lovely little pyramid here, which I forget the name of it. If I remember, I'll put it on the screen. I cannot remember the name of it, but I'm sure most of you, if you have ever done any type of writing, this is something even like I think I had in grade school, like elementary school and maybe high school, where they had this lovely little pyramid and it just had the different acts essentially like act one act two act three and it kind of goes along of your starting your beginning your inciting incident going up in your action you're meeting the climax and then you're rising down and i'm very much using this section for my novels um there's quite a bit that i have used to plot some of these books so like I even have 
this one, you know, it's got the exposition, the inciting incident, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. And it just really helps me to write out what, you know, the starts and things. I've got this pyramid drawn out up here on the page. And then I've got each of these like filled out with a little more details. This too really helps me when I sometimes find I'm struggling. When I find I'm struggling to fill out these, it sometimes helps me to just go back to basics and look at a much broader overview because that's part of my pantsing that is innately in me of sometimes I don't really know. I might just know a couple beats of what's happening. And this is really great to just write it down, have it somewhere, kind of see where the plot's going. And then it really helps me to build out this section to then build out my book. And so I actually use this, these different methods of plotting alongside another one. And maybe I'll do a video someday where I compare them all because I'm just trying to figure out what kind of works with me and my ability to write. And that is um, the plotting circle. Um, I think it's also called the Embryo Circle and it's the Dan Harmon, the creator of Community and Rick and Morty who did it. Um, so he created this circle. So I've actually been using this circle, which this doesn't look really pretty. I didn't make this all pretty and stuff. It's just literally what are the different things that he um, broke down and what are the different numbers mean and the areas on the circle. If you're interested, I can definitely do a video breaking this down more. I can do a video breaking down them all a little more if you want, or I can just even post to link to different videos that have more information because this has been a big change too. Because again, sometimes I'm not sure what structure works best for me. I'm still very much learning on the best way to write. And so I've been using the story circle as well, the plotting circle. So that's something that I use alongside this and the different methods and just get it in here. So next section and final section of this book is happy notes, which I took this from one of my happy notes uh, pieces of paper. And then I just took some little, um, I took some stickers here and then I took again these are from that planner I had that I just cut out I thought it was cute and this is where a lot of my research stuff is going in or things that I just need to put somewhere that didn't really fit in any of these particular sections but I need to know about it or like keep aware of it or just have an idea of it or like this is how this works like maybe it's the different cycles of the moon and what they're called, or maybe it's, you know, different cities that maybe are around a certain area. Like this is very much where some of those notes go. And again, I have a section for each book and I just put them all in there. So that is this writing notebook. And this one is definitely a nice one that I am able to bring with this right here and I'm able to either write on my laptop or write in my book depending on the method that I'm using to write for that particular book because some books I write on my laptop some I write in an actual journal it just all depends on the book so that is this book here and then I have this big behemoth one which is the uh, the big happy planner if you know about happy planners that is what this is with the disc holders here uh instead of a ring binder it's a disc binder it's, i love it love it love it i've been using my happy planner for at least a year and i absolutely love this um and this is as i said one of the big ones this was not the original outside of it the outside was actually this right here was the cover but I actually liked the kind of like spooky vibes and the, like the the night sky and I had this from one of my scrapbooking 
packs that I had and I just thought yes this fits because this is like my little book of spells to like keep track of my books and it starts right away when you open it to one of these little pocket folders right in the front from Happy Planner. I've also got like these little note pad little pages here, which are great because they just stick in and I can make little notes on them. In this folder here, I have a variety of things. Some of it is just like, I have stickers that I, d I don't have anywhere else really to stick them that well. I've got like little numbers and stuff. And so I, put them in this planner and it just keeps it nice in here at the front and then I also have on this side as well more stickers and things like some of my happy planner stickers that fell out or anything like that and it just keeps it all nice and snug for me so I'm not going to go through everything in here because honestly it's just random things to just really keep it in one place and keep it so that it's snug and secure. Then I have this on this side, which you may have already noticed as I was rambling on about this, which is everything you need before you self-publish. Now, I don't know if I'm self-publishing. I don't have that yet. What I really am focusing on right now is writing a story and getting a book finished. And then I will focus on whether I'm self-publishing it or traditionally publishing it. But I thought this was great from Sarah Cannon. Um, which if you've seen her on Heart Breathings, she had this lovely um, little note and some tips and information on self-publishing. So really, I love that she provided this. She like even has like the self-publishing checklist that is here with all of this stuff. And this is something that if you go, if you go to her website, I believe it is, at heartbreathings.com and you sign up for like her newsletter or email you can get access to this and you're able to print it off free which is completely amazing uh definitely giving a shout out to sarah at heart breathings of like providing information for aspiring authors or established authors even just to help on that author journey so this is pretty awesome that she provides that. And then I also have in here uh, Blake Snyder's Beat Sheet, as we talked about in my other notebook. This one was uh, provided by Alexa Dunn, who is another author on YouTube. And uh, I believe, I think she had a link to this in one of her videos. I don't know for sure. I just do know that Alexa Dunn was the one that uh, created this. So this was really good too to really help and so I have that printed and in, in here. Then I have, again, bigger versions of the Save the Cat and the 27 um, beat breakdown. Because if I essentially just want to use this book and I don't want to use both of these books, it's nice that I can have one or the other or both or anything like that. It just gives me some flexibility. And really... I'm someone too that I learned something more by writing. So the more I wrote this out, the more I learned about it and was able to digest it and understand it. And then I also have just a blurb about the three act structure and just that doesn't look as pretty because I haven't really finished it yet. Um, really need to go in and clean it up a bit. But it's just like, what are your three acts? And I'm, again, I'm just looking at what are different ways of story structure and like writing a story and I've got them all here. So then that's just a bit of the info that I have in here to kind of help me with writing this, these all here, these tabs all along the side. If you notice, they all have washi tape on them and they're colored different washi tapes which coordinate with different books that I'm writing. So each one of these tabs has a book that I'm writing in it. So we've got this one is a book about magic, obviously. Uh, well, maybe not obviously, but <laughs> to me, I just read it. I see the, all the stuff and I know this is my book about magic. And so uh, I've talked about how I've been writing one about a character named Ira. And this is a lot of that 27 beat sheet breaking down some of that plot. And then there's just more like back here. There's a bit of like the 
on the next page. I'm not going to show you because it's like a lot of information, but it's got the story circle I've got written out. I've also got like save the cat on the back of here. So yes, I've been using this to really try to get a better understanding of my story and where I'm going to help me write it. So that is this. And then I have a lot like back here. What I love about the big happy planners is they're very versatile because it's a disc system. So I can literally take like, for example, this right here and take it out and then I can plop it back in or I can plop it in wherever I want it. I absolutely love, love, love that about this style of notebook. And that really helps me to organize better, especially considering I'm someone where if you're just giving me a little bit of space, like even what maybe this is, this is going to confine me to just what I can put in here. Whereas this is going to be a bit bigger of a beast because it's going to let me put a lot more. It's going to put, let me put so much in here where I can move it around. I can change it. I can do all kinds of stuff with it. So that's awesome for me um, because I don't have to feel like I'm not using space where maybe there is space or that I accidentally started the next section too soon or anything. Like it's, it's room to grow and take away as needed. And I also have a hole punch where I can even just take like blank or my own pages. I can take any type of paper I have that I can essentially hole punch it and put it in here. So I absolutely love, love, love that about the happy planner. And as you can see, I got some more heart breathings stuff in here. And I just very much, some of these pages are just even my own paper that I've just hole punched or anything to put it in here to talk more about. There's so much in here. I'm not going to go through it all because there's so much that's like spoilers and things like that. But this whole section has different pages about this book. And then we go on to like this one. I haven't finished this one yet, but this one's going to be, I have a lovely little mark because it's telling me I need to do this page and this is where I am to fix this um, because I'm going to potentially have a video where I'm going to go through and show you what it's like to like just set up the page because as you see this is very blank um, I just I don't have anything written on here at all these are literally just my happy planner pages and I forgot to mention this is where I got the idea of using these boxes like this from the Happy Pant Planner calendar and using it like this from Heart Breathings. She has a video where she, I think she has a couple videos where she just shows her notebooks as well. She had, I think, a classic one and a big one, different, you know, ones depending on when she was writing different books and she broke it down like this. And so I thought she did such a great job. Like this doesn't even, to me, barely look like it's like calendar paper. Like I wouldn't know it was a calendar if I didn't know almost. So that's what it actually looked like before I washi taped it and all that. So I'll be doing a video about that. But each, again, this one is my another story where I've got so much information. Like <laughs> just the back of this page because I like that it's uh, the dotted paper. But the, all of this in here is going to be about another book. So I've got some pages to use. I've got some pages to use for another book. And then again, I've got more. Like each one I have used a different, like each, what I love is I know like this washi tape, I know what book that is. I know what book this is. Like even just looking at the tab before I flip to it, I know what book this is and this. I'm very much, it's how my brain works. It's very much like color coding and things like that. That's very much what I love organizing. And then I've got some like blank ones that I haven't done up yet either, which we could totally go through if you want. I'll just do the one. I don't know. Well, we'll see. But I've got each book has a different section in this one. And then I've got at the end here, I've just got another folder, which I don't really put anything in. So I really almost want this at the beginning of a different big happy planner when I finally get my next big happy planner. Um, because if I put anything in here, I just find it just having 
the two areas fill up with stuff. It just, it makes it like, I can even feel the bump right there. So I don't like it. So that essentially, then I just have like some extra pages back here in the back, like different types of pages that I might be able to use to, um, write in and, and fill out and take in and put in, stick in where I need to. So that is this one that this very much is still a work in progress, much like this one is, but those are my, those are my writing notebooks. Essentially. That's what I'm using to plot and plan and just have a good idea of what I'm using to write my books. So I love that I've found some different YouTube channels to get some of these ideas from, like Heart Breathings, like Katie Tastic, like Alexa Dunn, like there's so many others, Jessica Brody, things like that, that there's so much. Those are some of the big names that I can think of. There are so many other where I am like on there and just finding out more information because it's a whole learning process. Uh, I don't think being someone who's not published this, you know, take this as you will. But from my experience, you are always learning. There's always something to learn in anything that you do, whether that's your career, your passion, whatever, there is always something to learn. So I'm very much a big advocator on getting more information, learning more, and just always improving in different ways, even if it's a little bit every day to make what you do better and make yourself essentially better. So that's, I love learning and I love that we have a platform where it's easy to get information and learn more. I wish we had this years ago. Uh, and I'm just glad that we do have platforms like this where people can have a voice. So I hope you enjoyed. If you learned something or how, take anything from this video that is amazing that just make me so thrilled if you just like seeing people go through notebooks and seeing what people have I get that I, I go down that rabbit hole on YouTube sometimes so uh, maybe if you enjoyed that's awesome but I just wanted to give a little bit of like an update because I put in a video of oh I'm like working on writing. I've got a bit of snippets on my blog and then I don't really say much else because writing can be such a personal thing to me in that it's not something I quote unquote have achieved yet. It's something I'm still very much learning and there's that posture syndrome and just that fear and doubt that can very much come in. So I'm putting this out there as something to say, I am working on it. I am still doing little bits to achieve a goal of sometime, someday being able to say, look, I wrote a book. <laughs> and hopefully it's the first of many books. As you can see, I have many book ideas. So I am going to end this video now so that I can go take some time and get using some of these plotting notes and planning notes to go and write. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. You know what to do. I do appreciate it. Thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, night, evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Thank you so much for being here. Take care of yourselves and you will see me and maybe my hands in another video. Bye.